All right, welcome back to the Bandit new episode 10 of the Battlegrounds game. Also, if you want, I have a new game Discord. As you can as you probably know, I have my main Discord here. And now I also have a new Discord server, which just features development of a new game. If you want, I'll leave this both in the description and you can join if you want. And yeah, let's get back to the video. So, I greatly forgot to well, unmute my microphone and I just recorded 35 minutes without talking. Great. So now I'll just punch this in like 10 minutes because I really don't got the time. I'll just spend it like 10 minutes. I'm trying to make it as fast as possible to make it as easy as possible for you. So yeah, sorry if I rush something or if you have to pause the video to copy something or anything like this, but I just don't got a time and I just want to bring up the video for you. So I'm really sorry. But yeah, let me just open up my game, which I pre-did in my vacation in the autumn break because I it was raining and I had a lot of time. So I brought my laptop with me and I finished the whole game in like five days. Went from like nothing. I think it was like episode three, which we brought on and I, I just went to like episode 15, 16, 17 in like five days. We still haven't catch up. We still haven't catch up. But yeah. Okay, let me check. My mic is unmuted and ready to go. Okay, so first thing first, we are going to make the characters do some stuff. So in the server, as you can see here, we have the whole function for like loading in the character and doing this stuff. So what we need to do is we need to write the ability module thing. So we have done this in the last episode or not wrote it, but we have created it. And we will just fastly write it. I'll just write it and explain you what it is. So we first of all get the config. Just require in storage modules and config and then we want to do local blood ability module and then here we want to return ability module and then we need two functions first one being this and the second one being the setup character which will need the player and the character info table like this so then we get three things oh yeah also in the description uh, there is going to be my discord server down in the description in the description you will see something called the bottom bar bottom bar bottom bar and yeah, you just want to paste this into your status drawer. It's going to be in the Discord. When you join my Discord, you will see an information channel. You might have to go on browse channels, but then you will see the information channel. In there, it will tell you how you get access to video resources. And in video resources, it will be there. I may also post it in the announcements, so check them out too. Also, in my announcements, there is going to be a link directly to join my game server, so make sure you join there too. Okay, so not enough self-advertising, but I just have to say one more word because we almost hit 5,000. We are currently at 4,960 4, subs, so only 40 more to go. Thank you all for this great support I had in the last in the last like half year, almost like three, three, four quarter year now. But yeah, let's continue on with the thing. So we inserted it so now we can define those values and then we pretty much create a loop for it so this will do we get the player gear of course we get the bottom bar which is this we get the buttons which is this and also the ults we can delete this because we are not going to script this you will you don't have to delete it because i'm going to delete it anyways but then we create a loop and we do for every item in buttons get children which will be those three. We check if it it's a name as templates, so like this, or it's a UI grid layout, so this. 
we should also say is a UI corner, we just copy this and paste it over to my original file. And then we continue in the L3 district. For the cast ability then, we pretty much paste the same stuff. And then we have to create two new values. We just go to data manager, data stats, and we create those two values in there. And those two values would be old points and old active. Just make sure you copy them. So then we can go back and then we can paste this whole bunch of stuff in here. So this is the whole stuff you have to write. I'm going to skim through it and explain you what it does. So if player like the value. So if the alt is active for the player, then we get every move in character info table dot alt dot move set. And if it's not active, we get every move in just normal move set with no alt. Then we do this is the same stuff as this. Then we do if the keybind is the keystroke of the alt, then we skip it because we don't need to do this for the alt because the alt bar will be handled differently. Then we get the clone, which is just a template clone. Then we're naming it to the keybinds, we send the ability text to the ability name, keybind to the keybinds, layout order to the order num, which we have to do in a second. Then we copy this. Then we set the parent to buttons, visible true, and then we do this one here, which is in the activate this script, we set it to enabled. This just handles the ability process and like double clicking. I left some notes if you want to read. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So then we got the ability model set up and ready to go. Now we need to go to the character info table, which is just the character module. And in every single move, we set the auto num to go to one. Then we set it to two, just the, to match the number. So this is two, we set it to two. This is three, we set it to three. This is four. We set it to four. Again, this is one, set it to one. This is two, we set it to two. This is three, we set it to three. This is four, we set it to four. You don't have to do it for the old. We did we just don't need it. Then we head to the server, which we have to change some stuff around, as always. And yeah. So let's do this real fast. So in here. We can change some stuff. So we get all this set up. Then in here we do player dot alt active dot value to false. And then we also do ability module called cleanup for the player. And down here we do ability module called setup character for the player. And then we do the character table. Like this. Then for the player edits, I'm going to delete this stuff. Then we get this stuff set up and this looks good. Now for the change character, we have to also change quite a bit. Not quite a bit, but some stuff. Change it like this, then I will do here. I'm also going to make the old points, the old active. So this is when we change a character, let me just switch out like the old points that value set to zero. Because when you switch character, you shouldn't have an old bar progression already. So we just said, then I'm also going to add a else statement here. Just, yeah, to make it work. And then this is pretty much it. Then we get the character, which remains the ability. And yeah, now we have to script two more functions. So we get the ability ability dot on server invoke is equal to function for the player and the ability name and we also got the fire ability the client is already scripted in the click so you don't have to worry about this we get on server event called connect function and connect with player and the ability name actually the ability info table sorry 
yeah, we need to script those two functions. So first of all, for the ability, we get the select character. And then we want to do if the characters folder finds the select character, then we get some values here. So we get the character module, which is just requiring this. So then it would be like Duelist, Street Fighter, Assault Master, those. And then the instance, which is just the module itself. Then we define two Boolean variables. Then we check if the old is active. And then we set the moveset to the old moveset and else we just set it to no normal moveset. Then if the moveset is valid, we go through every single move in the moveset. And we check if the move.name is equal to our ability name. And if yes, we set the ability info table to this. For instance, if you go to our salt master, see we have the moveset and we have the old moveset. And as you can see, we just have to put the names in, I just realized. But yeah, let's put this in. So I'm going to, of course, use the moves I have in my original game too. So the first move would then be Metal Fists. The second one would then be Earth Splitter. The third one would be Soul Flame Strike. And the fourth one would be Blade Storm Rush. And I'm also going to put the old in, which will be called Titan's Wrath. And yeah, so if the name is equal to our ability name, then we will cast this. I'm also going to put a cooldown of like five seconds in here. So we can test this out later. Yeah, now, as you can see, if the move is there, then we want to break. And then we do, if the bridge into the table, we print it. We 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 try it. We we return it, and else we warn there's nothing, and then else here we can just do sort of character does not exist. And lastly, we can return blank table like this. So then we got the server for the fire ability now. We just do the same thing, we get the select character, and then we do if ability info table, then we just print it and get the two instances we need, and then we can cast the ability. And then we do local ability module, so it would require, then we do character module instance, which would again be one of those. And then we index this, Oh, we do abilities. So if we find an abilities in here, then we do ability module called cast. Then we do player on ability info table. And else we just put another one of the warnings and now we're good to go. And yeah, let me see if I missed something. I don't hope so, but let me see. So now, view, and it prints the four moves. When we press, it does, it's not a valid member. We can change this. So this is how abilities will work. You have to put a module script inside the abilities, and you have to call this however the ability is named. And in here, we change this thing to just do return function for the player as a player and of course the ability data and then we can just do for testing prints metal tricks or something then we can play the game and try out if this works now when we press metal fists it casts metal fists it prints the thing the cooldown works and everything is fine oh yeah i think this was it for today's video i will quickly show you how this ability will look next episode when we actually go to scripting it let me switch my studio scene around or let me just enable full screen let me play you can see i have the same ui same stuff 
same hitboxes, same things. But yeah, Metal Fists actually does this animation. My fists get to metal and I get a different hitting animation and I do more damage. As you can see, currently I do 7% damage. Just like 7%. Pretty much. 7-8% with the metal fists. Okay, I have to fix it box eventually. But I do like more. We also got like an after the ability. It looks like this. And pretty much the old is just pretty much like this. I haven't done any of those yet. Like no. But yeah, this is basically how it works. And yeah, we will be doing this in the next few episodes. So with the character changing. Do like dual dances. Just like two two swords. Yeah, like those two. And yeah. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next video. Peace.